So all hour long, we've been talking about what it means to put family over everything. Our next guest caught my attention when she shared her story in New York Magazine's The Cut's popular parenting column. How I Got This Baby was what it was called. Molly Corcoran is a mom of three who has been a surrogate four times. That means she's been pregnant seven times. Here's how she made the leap from first learning about surrogacy to becoming a surrogate four times over. Take a look. I remember working at the IVF clinic and I would hear so many stories about failed pregnancies and unsuccessful IVF cycles and it really was heartbreaking. My husband and I already have three children of our own, but I thought becoming a surrogate would be a way for everyone to see how many different ways that you can make a family. My first surrogacy journey started in 2017 for a couple in Belgium and I delivered their daughter in 2018. Then I jumped right into the process for a new family in 2019 and I delivered their daughter in 2020. During my second surrogacy, the intended parents asked if I would carry for them again and I delivered their second daughter in October of 2021. And just when I thought I was done, here I am, 41 years old, and in my third trimester of my fourth surrogacy journey, and I am due later this summer. When my intended parents saw their baby for the first time, the look on their face, that is the moment that I live for. Wow. Please welcome from our home in Connecticut, Molly Corcoran, and Features Editor for New York Magazine and the Cut, Julia Edelstein. Molly, I should point out, you would be here in studio, but you are how many weeks along now? I am 33 weeks along right now. 33 weeks. <laughs> you know, people always, we just had Sean, T, and Scott on with their journey. People always ask this question, I'm sure. What kind of person um, or what type of personality um, do you find with a surrogate? Because it's such a, I mean, it's the ultimate gift you can give someone. Yeah. What was it, it about it really, your what is it about your personality and your background that made you want to do this so many times? Yeah, I feel that it's just in me to always want to help others. And, you know, I learned about it when I was at a fertility clinic and I did it once and I can just never imagine myself not, you know, not helping others. Julia, for so long, you know, surrogacy people associated with celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there was always also sometimes a negative stigma that, okay, that woman doesn't want to ruin her body, so someone else, it, they're all of these conversations. But the numbers now of people who are not celebrities, people for medical reasons, for a multitude of reasons, Sean T and Scott, you know, right. needed a surrogate. It's stunning, um, the conversation now versus just 10 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think surrogacy is still not it's not the mainstream way that people are having kids. And so I think that there's still stigma around it and a lot of misconceptions around it. And yet, and that's why this story is so important because I think many more, as more people use surrogates to have babies, um, it is becoming you know something people know about. And yet we want to change, I guess, the narrative around it. That what is the biggest narrative for, change that's needed? Well, I think that people do associate it with Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian. Um, they think that it is economically totally out of bounds. And also the surrogates sometimes do it even altruistically. Um, so it is becoming a bit more mainstream and we're seeing legislation in um, more and more states that is, are protecting the surrogates and making it more possible. So so what's the big takeaway from, from the conversation that you got? Because you've been writing about parenting and this journey of family over everything for a very long time. What was the biggest thing that you learned out of this? Well, you know, we revived this column um, at New York Magazine and The Cut, partly because we see so many images of parenthood on social media. Yeah. Like, we actually are more inundated in a way than we've ever been. And yet, I think that many of those stories are a little bit inauthentic. They're edited. There's a, a musical soundtrack behind them. And what's amazing about this column is that it really gets into the nitty gritty detail of what it is like. And we have very long, extensive interviews with the women who are generous enough to share their stories. Um, and because we're trying to normalize that, you know, the path to parenthood is not easy. There's a lot of struggle and there are many beautiful ways to become a parent and to just for people to see themselves in it, for people who are curious about becoming parents to to be open to a lot of different paths and really just start the conversation around it. So I love that. So Molly, you're preparing. This is your last time, right? Be, to be a surrogate. I'm not time. I'm not advocating it be your last time. <laughs> My team said that you made the decision this is your last yes. time. 
what made you decide that this was the final time? Um, I've had a lot of seven to a lot of pregnancies, so it you get to a point where you start pushing it <laughs> that you really you really should stop while you're while you're ahead. I'm older now, so a pregnancy is more tiring and stuff. And you know, I've helped now three different families bring four babies into this world, and I think I think it's a good time to stop. Wow. Well, I know you're doing work with helping LGBTQ plus families uh, have their dream. Good luck on the pregnancy. Thank you for sharing the dream. What an enlightening article. Thank you so much as well. Molly and Julia, you can check out New York Magazine's The Cuts popular parenting column, How I Got This Baby.